Dave. Welcome to my channel. Um, today I want to talk a little bit about some G&Ls. Um, in some of my earlier videos, you've seen me play the butterscotch G&L that belongs to a buddy of mine who wants to sell it to me, but we'll see. Um, it is an Indonesian-made guitar. It played great. Um, it's definitely one of my favorite playing um, inexpensive guitars. And it's a great price. I think he got it for $4.99. Recently, he picked up another one. He picked up another Indonesian, and it's like this really faded mint green type of thing. Um, and it plays really nice, and uh, and so he's been on a G&L kick, so I thought I would break mine out for the day. So this is my G&L. It is a uh, G&L ASAT Classic S, but it's made custom. Uh, the custom appointments on it are I've had the headstock reversed. Um, that came out of me playing for years, playing Jackson's. And then after a while, I stopped using the locking nut on it, and I found that it was easier to tune upside down than it is this way. So I was like, mm, I kind of like it upside down, so I don't have to, if I have to adjust the tuning, I kind of got used to it. Uh, these are stainless steel frets that I also had on here. I also didn't have the Tele neck pickup, the smaller pickup. I had a full-size Strat pickup in the two positions, and they're the MFD pickups. And it has the saddle, and because of that, it also has the pull-up, which will turn the neck on when I'm in the bridge so I can get the standard telly sound. Um, the only difference being is that they're not reverse wound because they need to be reversed from the middle. So that's kind of like the only thing about that. Other than that, this is a, one of my favorite playing guitars. I have a big fat V-neck on this with a satin finish, um, gloss headstock. Um, I think the natural looking headstocks look cheaper. Even if you buy an Indonesian and it has a, uh, the satin headstock, my, I recommend just going out and having somebody gloss it. This looks so much better. It looks like an American guitar. But it's just a nicer touch. And the little touches to me are what, you know, makes it. I've made several videos where I talk about how the woods don't matter and all that. And that's all true. What we're talking about is when it's coming out, what's going to the amplifier. However, when something's in your hand and you want it to vibrate a certain way, that's a different story. That's not, that has no effect on what's coming out of the amplifier other than whether I enjoy it or not. And so I want to make that point. Like, I'm not saying that things are pointless. If you like playing a big jazz box, by all means, play it. But coming out of that amplifier, if I put, um, even like a 335, if I put some distortion on a 335, you're going to have a hard time telling it apart from other guitars. Um... But anyway, this guitar... Just has the kind of thing that I dig. Um, this one also has the locking tuners on the back. And it had the stereo system where they put it on a placard instead of right on the neck, which I think they've changed. Um, overall, I think the ASAT's a great guitar. The reason why I wanted to break mine out today is I wanted to talk about what G&L is doing. They have this thing this year called the Fullerton Standard, which is basically like an ASAT. Um, you can get it in the copper, which I think that um, Spanish copper is a gorgeous color. It also comes in a vintage white. What the Fullerton is, it's a 9.5 radius. This here, I believe, is a 12, um, 12 inch radius. But the Fullerton comes with a 9.5 medium jumbo um, nickel steel frets. It has these two pickups, not the middle one, but just the regular pickups. Um, you know, standard headstock, a C shape. But basically, all the nice USA appointments, a USA guitar, but it comes with a gig bag, and you can get it for $9.99, the street price. I've seen one on eBay for $800. Um, for a USA Tele, in the quality that GNL makes their guitars, I think it's fantastic. I think this is something you shouldn't pass up and you should look into. It's called the Fullerton Standard, and that Spanish copper to me is hot, and the vintage white looks good. And if you want to change the pick guard, um, I forget the name of the company, Chandler Online makes the official GNL pick guard. You can call Chandler. I believe that's it. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was Chandler that still makes them. Anyways, um, so that's the Fullerton, and then they also have a Legacy that comes in the gig bag as well, the Fullerton Standard Legacy. 
And then all the um, other different appointments, if you wanted like a Blues Boy or you want something like that, then you have to go into the Fullerton Deluxe, which has some nicer appointments and um, comes with a hard shell case. And there, I think there's somewhere between 13 and 1500 um, which is your average price of what you should be paying for a USA instrument or what you would imagine would be a fair price. So the 999 price to me, I think is fantastic, especially if you're the kind of guy like my buddy Al, who tends to always keep his hard cases at home and throws everything in a gig bag. He'd rather have the gig bag anyway. I like the hard cases, that's me. Um, but I, I honestly can't see paying an extra 500 bucks for a hard case, four to 500. So I really think the Fullerton standard is something to look into and, uh, and see if it's something that you like. Um, now this is a clear orange finish and they do this and I think they've done a tribute series also in this color. Um, when I got it, I didn't see this color around much, so I wanted it. I was like, ooh, that's cool and different. You can see the grain of the wood. Um, you know, and you can see that I think it might be a two-piece or a three-piece. I'm not sure. I haven't really looked at it. It could be a one-piece. No, it's definitely a two. Um, I see the seam down the middle. So, uh, do those matter? How many pieces of wood are here? No, it doesn't matter. It's not affecting anything. Um, if you believe that it is, that's fine. Pay the premium for the single piece of wood. It's It doesn't matter to me. It's not even worth the argument. And when I tell you these things and I post these things, people get so mad. It's like they're so mad at like at me and how stupid I am. And it's like, well, I don't know. I built guitars and been around the manufacturing of guitars for 20 some odd years. But you know more than I do because you have these unbelievable ears. Can't play in tune, but you have unbelievable ears that you can hear um, everything I'm saying. Anyways, that's just, uh, and I'm not saying you can't play in tune. I'm saying just in general, I've had people that tell me that I know them personally and they never play in tune. And they're like telling me how like, how everything affects the way the string vibrates. And I'm just like, hmm. Yet, here's the equation for the physics of a vibrating string and nowhere in it is the variable of an outside source. Hmm, that's a mystery. So yeah, so anyways, uh, but I do think that GNL makes a fantastic instrument. You know, um, I think Fender really does a lot of things on the cheap. Um, they do a lot of things right. But I think they miss the boat on a lot of things. And, and I'm, I'm not here to sing the praises of GNL by any means. No one's given me instruments and endorsing me in that way. Um, in fact, I won't play a legacy because I think they have, I think their bridge needs to be improved and I would never use their bridge. Uh, in fact, if somebody made an aftermarket uh, GNL pop-in bridge, I think they would have a lot of success because the way the bridge is, um, it has these rings around um, where it goes on the posts and it makes it so you can't push down if the tremolo is flat to the body. So it has to always be floating. So if you like a floating bridge, then the GNL Legacies and the S500s are great. If you don't like them, they're terrible, and that's where I stand on that. And that's fine. Um, I do love the hardtail stuff. I love this, this, uh, you know, ashtray type bridge with the six brass saddles. I do love that. And I think GNL makes a, uh, a great product, and I think they have uh, some great ideas. Um, I think their bases are great. Um, I do think they need a pick guard like the Music Man's. Um, they just are a little naked with like that. Um, just the pickups on this big empty piece of wood. I don't know. It just needs something. That's just my own personal taste. But uh, in the end, I think that they make a fantastic guitar. This is one of my favorites. It's a, uh, when I did my country band, I had a country band called Lonesome Rodeo, and we would go out and play, and this was the guitar that I would take out to every gig. It just has that nice... Um <laughs> It's just really cool. Anyways, um, I thank you all for the love on the stuff. I'll get to more lessons and I'll get to making more videos. I've taken a little time off just in between just um, with a lot of stuff I had going on. The summer's over and, uh, and thanks a lot for watching. Very good. Thank you very much. Well, look me over. <laughs> I didn't get dressed like this to go unnoticed. <laughs> You're right on target. You're right on the money.
everything you said. You hit the nail right on the head with your comments, what you're saying today. You're 150% correct.